loving God, we thank you for this blessed day. Oh Holy Spirit, you are always with us. Oh Father, you are our creator. Oh Jesus, you are our redeemer. Help us to understand the scriptures so that we may lead a good Christian life and receive all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dearly beloved, once again I greet you all in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God has given us wonderful weather. Even though in Tamil culture or in Tamil Nadu, we say the hottest season is Katri. But God has put a Katri to this Katri and gave us wonderful weather. We thank you for that. We glorify the Lord. Today we observe Trinity Sunday. I think we can start here. Please and Mr. Uh, Emil Brunner was the one who said, if you try to understand fully or make an attempt to understand fully the doctrine of Trinity, you will lose your mind. And he also said, if you deny the doctrine of Trinity, you will lose your soul. So this is an important uh, doctrine that we all have to hold in order to lead a good Christian life. Now, this doctrine has a practical implication in all our personal life. If you want to lead a good Christian life, you have to hold on to this doctrine, the doctrine of Trinity. Now, I think they have some problem. It's okay, doesn't matter. <coughs> the Westminster Catechism says, our God is one. At the same time, he manifests himself in three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. They all are equal. They have one substance, one nature. But they manifest themselves in three persons. And this is the doctrine that we see in the scripture. First, we have to bear in mind that we are imperfect being. We have limited knowledge, limited wis wisdom. Our God is incomprehensible fully. He is invisible. With our limited mind, we cannot, we cannot understand God fully well. Just to give an example. <clears throat> In the Ottoman Empire, there was a Muslim king. Wherever he went and conquered nations, he always wanted to show his domination over the people of that nation. In order to show that, he will ask them to take him into their temple. We all know that everyone thinks that outsiders should not enter into their own temple. But he will force them to allow him to enter into the temple. Now the thing is, whenever he enters into a temple, at the altar there will be a statue. And he will enter into it and make fun, make fun of the statue. In order to ridicule them and put them down. Now this has been his habit, once he conquered Jerusalem and he called the high priest and asked him to take him into Jerusalem temple, in his mind he wanted to ridicule the God inside the Jerusalem temple. But we all know the Jews didn't have any idols. But the high priest said, yes king, I will take you tomorrow. At an appointed time, he took the king from the palace 
to Jerusalem temple. On the way, it was a midday, the sun was shining brightly and the high priest made a request to the king. O king, before we enter into the Jerusalem temple, I want you to look at the sun. The sun was brightly shining. It was very hot. The king tried to look at the sun, but he couldn't. He couldn't look at the sun. And he said, Oh, I couldn't look at the sun. It's so bright. Then the high priest said, Oh king, this sun is just a small servant to our almighty God. If you can't even look at the servant of our God, you will never be able to see our God. Then he took him into the Jerusalem temple and showed the altar there was nothing and there were holy holies, no one could enter into it and there was no statue. The thing, the point is, we cannot fully understand God. But we know that God has revealed himself. Even though it is very, very difficult to understand the doctrine of Trinity, we accept it because it is biblical. It is Bible based. It is there in the scripture. We have to accept it. We have many Bible verses that clearly say that our God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. There are many Bible verses that say God the Father is God. Probably they will send the notes to you in that we will have many Bible verses. Then again, the scripture also says that Jesus Christ is God himself. And Holy Spirit is God himself. When Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit, he clearly said, he will be another person like me. The Greek word alotes clearly means, the Holy Spirit is another person like me. Now, having received these Bible verses from the scripture, that he have only one God, yet at the same time, Father is God, Jesus Christ is God, Holy Spirit is God. Now, before I place before you the important verses, <clears throat> let me share with you that there are many wrong understanding. We have to be very, very careful about these wrong understandings. These wrong understanding, someone said, the biblical doctrine of Trinity has more truthfulness than clarity. The false doctrines, again I will say, the false doctrines have more clarity than truthfulness. For example, some people think we worship three gods. That is tri-theism. Tri Muslims think that we worship three gods. That's why they criticize us. We are worshiping three gods, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. No. We don't worship three gods. We worship only one God. But he is in three persons, that's all. Now the other wrong understanding is that it is called modalism. That is, when God created this world, oh we got it, okay. When God created this world, he created as father. Okay. Probably we move on to the wrong understanding of Trinity. <clears throat> yeah, this is the definition of the Trinity. Just move on. This is uh, Westminster's uh, definition. This is the right understanding. This is not the wrong understanding. Yeah, Westminster's catechism. This is the right understanding. God, Father, God and Holy Spirit. Let's move on to the wrong understanding. Yeah, Father, Son and Holy Spirit are three gods. No, we are not subscribing to this view. Then the second one. Yeah, Sabellius is a, was a, another pastor. He said, one God has manifested himself as three different 
forms in different time periods he said in the beginning god was the father then the same father came into this world as jesus christ and then he lived and then he died rose again and went up to heaven on the day of pentecost he came down as the holy spirit very simple in the creation father when he came down jesus and then he was the holy spirit now the problem is there are many bible verses that say they interacted with each other interacted with each other we all know that jesus prayed that implies he prayed to someone not to himself isn't it so there, there, there is father and we have son jesus christ now this is very similar to this uh, metamorphism of uh, the caterpillar turning to pupa and then butterfly or one person is a commander of the army husband to his wife and father to his children now this is a wrong understanding it's not that one father is a different person to different people he is three person let's move on the other one jehovah we have to be very careful with these people nowadays in chennai they approach our csi members and try to convert them to their own church and say they say jehovah alone is god jesus christ is not god holy spirit is not god jesus christ is just at the most we can think of him as a great prophet not nothing more now with regard to the holy spirit they always uh, compare it com- compare him with uh, the electricity just energy that's all only jehova is god not the other people actually <coughs> we had uh, wrong doctrines or the wrong understanding of gnostics who say jesus was not god even at the time of early church now they said he was not god but just a man now the people asked him if he is just a man how can one man's blood can give forgiveness to all the people on this earth then they were caught okay then move on the right understanding god is in three person right from the beginning the first scripture post that clearly talks about is what we read as the first lesson genesis chapter 1 let me move on quickly because i have many slides okay if you look at genesis chapter 1 there we see even at the beginning god was there as the father son and holy spirit if you see look at verse 1 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void darkness was over the face of the deep and the spirit of god was hovering over the water then god said let there be light so god created this world holy spirit was there hovering over the water and god made a sound his word came out let that be light and then the light appeared now we know john clearly say that word became flesh that is jesus christ so even at the time of creation we have father son and holy spirit okay let me stick to this uh, powerpoint presentation you can move on <coughs> okay i say a chapter 63 many people think father son and holy spirit the doctrine of trinity is a new testament uh, time revelation no even in the old testament god was father son and holy spirit now this is a beautiful passage now i want you to turn along with me to that particular passage Isaiah chapter 63 verse 7 to 10 page number 791 page number 791 this is an important verse there we see as Isaiah describes the salvation of the Israelites 
he talks about father son and holy spirit look at verse 7 i will recount the steadfast love of the lord and praises of the lord so he was talking about the lord god then move on to verse 9 in all that affliction he was afflicted so many times the those who deny doctrine of trinity we ask this question when was father afflicted no answer the only one who was afflicted was jesus christ now he was described as in verse 9 and the angel of his presence saved them so there we see jesus christ look at verse 10 but they rebelled and grieved his holy spirit so even in the old testament god revealed himself as father son and holy spirit let's move on now look at the uh, birth of jesus christ the narrative there again we see father son and holy spirit no, he will be called the son of the most high. So the son is mentioned, the most high is mentioned. Then Holy Spirit will empower you. Before God the son could enter into your womb, you will be empowered with the Holy Spirit. So even at the birth of Jesus Christ, Father, Son and Holy Spirit operated. Then let's move on. Let's look at Matthew chapter 3. There again we see the scripture clearly telling us when Jesus was baptizing, baptized in the river Jordan, Father God spoke from above. And the Holy Spirit came down as a dove, in the form of a dove. And Jesus Christ was standing in the water. So at the same time, Father, Son and Holy Spirit exist. They all three are there. They are different because they were interacting with each other. Let's move on. Now, we, before we enter into this uh, part, let me give you a warning. I've been going through this all through my 40 years of my ministry. I've been struggling with this doctrine. And recently, in the past uh, two weeks, I'm logging on to different uh, videos and presentations in the YouTube. Uh, Professor Wilfred Annan also sent me some videos. I've been watching them. And the new thing that I learned in this past week is that none of the examples are correct. They clearly say none of the examples are correct. We have many examples. In the past, many pastors, many scholars have been giving many examples. All these earthly examples are, doesn't, do not perfectly fit the doctrine of Trinity. Even though they give us glimpses, few glimpses about the doctrine of Trinity. For example, they used to say, okay, a cube, it has length, breadth and height, three dimensions. Perfect, but one object, one cube, but three dimensions. Okay, this is an example of the uh, doctrine of Trinity, but that doesn't fully explain it. Then three sides of triangle. Yes, that's another example, but it's not a perfect one. Because side is different, the object is different. Okay, then another example, water, ice, steam. Okay. H2O is in three different states, solid, liquid, and gaseous. But again, it's not the same H2O, okay? The water, that's a different H2O. And when the same will be, be turned into ice, that's true. But at the same time, it's a different state. But if you think of H2O at the same time, then that is different. So this is again a, a, a good example, but it's not perfect. Then how about electrical waves? Do you know the light is electrical wave? Sound is also an electrical wave. Heat is also an electrical wave. That's why using the same electricity, we have the light, we can hear sound, 
we can watch TV, we can see things and hear things, and you have microwaves using the same electricity. But again, this is not a perfect example. Let's move on. Okay, some people say, okay, waterfalls, it runs in the river and goes to the sea, all are water. So Father, Son and Holy Spirit. But again, it's a modalism. Not at the same time. Okay. Then we have, in uh, Hebrew language, we have different words for one. When the Israelites said, our Lord is one, hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Now there, the word used is something that refers to a bunch. A dozen. There is only one dozen, but it has 12 objects. One dozen. Now this word is used to define God is one. But at the same time, this is not a perfect one. Because again, we divide God into different parts. No, it's not that. Let's move on. Okay. Some people gave another example. I don't know how many of you broke the thermometer and handled the mercury in your hand. The doctor says yes. <laughs> okay, I did it. I did it. Now, if you take the mercury in your hand, it will roll like one drop. But you can divide it into different uh, droplets. And if you bring it together, again they will all become immediately, immediately become one drop. Okay, it's like same mercury in three droplets. Now, this is an example, but not a perfect one. Because in the mercury, either it will be one or different droplets at a different time. Whereas with regard to the Holy Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit are at the same time. Some people, we had a discussion in Men's Fellowship. Uh, someone came with an idea that is in the beginning God was one now during this middle time he was father son and holy spirit again on the end he will become one God no that's not biblical it's easy to understand but it's not biblical even the other day some pastor came and he was ex also explaining the doctrine of trinity in this way Initially he was one God, then creation, then Jesus came, after Pentecost, in the final, after final judgment, there will be one God. No, that's not scriptural. Let's move on. <clears throat> now we accept our God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit because the Bible is very, very clear about it. First, let me share with you few phrases that clearly say we have Father, Son and Holy Spirit. One is 2nd Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14. The blessing. The name of the Lord our Savior Jesus Christ. We say that Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Now here we see the blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Now, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, don't try to understand the Trinity, doctrine of Trinity fully. You can make an attempt, but you can go only up to a certain level. But, this is an important doctrine for our salvation, for our blessing. Now, here we see our blessing is complete. Again I say, our blessing is complete because our God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Through the Son, we receive grace. So I would say, this is an experiential doctrine. Okay? Don't stop with cognitive level. You cannot never fully understand it. But in your experience, you will experience 
Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We need grace in this world. And Jesus Christ gives us this grace in all things, at all times, in all places. Then the love of the Father, the love of the Father. Yes, we experience God's love. We must hold on to this love of God every day, every minute. In this world, people may love you or people may hate you. Sometimes people hurt each other. There is a story about a pastor and a sexton. The sexton on Sunday morning, he came and told the pastor, Pastor, there is a body, dead body of a donkey in front of a church gate. Now today is a Sunday, 8.30 is a service. Pastor, why don't you call the corporation office? office. So the pastor rang it in those days and called the engineer in the corporation office and told him, see, today is a Sunday. We have a service at 8.30 and we have a body of the dead donkey in front of our gate. Why don't you send people to remove it? And the officer wanted to kill the pastor. He said, Father, I thought you take care of the burials. Why don't you take care of this donkey also? And the pastor didn't know what to do. But anyway, he was, he's also a quick-witted person. So he said, yes, 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 we church also take up burials also. But before we do it, we normally call the relatives and give them the first chance. That's why I called you. Now, in this, this is a lighter way, but as you go in, out into this world, there are many people who will hurt you, deliberately or unknowingly. We are living in a world where hatred is is increasing one group hating the other group the other religious community hating Christians we see this all over this world but in this world we experience God's love the third one of course is the fellowship we all enjoy the fellowship through the Holy Spirit we come from different parts of this world we come from different backgrounds we come from different class levels, but in this place we are one. Who brings us one? It is the Holy Spirit. As we come into the church, we are one family, brothers and sisters. We forget about our past. We forget about our position in the society. We all are brothers and sisters in Christ. So we thank God as one family and we receive this unity through the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Of course, in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, 19, we are asked to baptize people in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's move on. <coughs> now, this is one person said, uh, I al already told this, biblical doctrine of Trinity has more truthfulness than clarity, but false doctrines have more clarity than truthfulness. Let's move on. Now, let me come to the last part. That is, what is the danger if you hold on to one person, ignore the other two? Then finally, let me share with you in what way holding on to Father, Son and Holy Spirit as a practical blessings in our personal life. Now, the first problem, the next slide, the first problem is deism. That is, if you just hold on to the Father, ignore Jesus Christ, ignore the Holy Spirit, that will lead you to your Father, God, who is high above everyone, who created this world, left it on its own, is somewhere high. That is the danger with regard to 
holding on to father alone and ignoring jesus and the holy spirit deism the second one cultism if you hold on to jesus christ as a historical person you will be ignoring god the creator god who relates to everybody you want to exclude yourself from other people oh i am a christian i am a believer no yes we believe in jesus at the same time it is father god who sent him father god loves the whole world god so loved the world we will miss god who is relating himself to different people either they are christians or non christians okay that is cultism is another problem then individualism if you hold on to the holy spirit and ignore jesus and god you, that will lead to individualism that is you will say i am filled with the holy spirit this is what i have reve revealed by holy spirit and whatever i say is from the holy spirit now the problem is when people started doing this sometimes they get wrong ideas and they say it and say this is what the lord says there are many false prophets here in this world even in chennai they boldly say falsely this is what the lord says but they say wrong things how do we know that when we compare what they say with the scripture they contradict they contradict so that's how we have to be very very careful with another danger individualism now in what way father son and holy spirit should be experienced in our christian life yes for our salvation dear brothers and sisters in christ our salvation comes to us only through father son and holy spirit how do we know that let me give you one verse second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 and 14 page number 1260 with another verse i like to close 1260 but we ought always to give thanks to god for you brothers beloved by the lord because god chose you god chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the holy spirit in the same verse he talks about god and he also talks about the spirit and believe in the truth and to this he called you through our gospel so that you may obtain the glory of our lord jesus christ so in the same two verses he brings out father son and holy spirit for our salvation we need father because he is the one who sent jesus christ we need the son because he died for us on the cross we need the holy spirit because he operates every day in our life now i just want to you to remember ephesians chapter 4 verse 6 we have one god he is above all and he is beside us and he is within us above all father god beside us jesus christ within us holy spirit So if you want to lead a good Christian life you have to hold on to father son and holy spirit then next one this is for our salvation anyway you will be getting these notes uh, through our church whatsapp group the next one is with regard to the prayer life okay we all pray to whom do we pray to whom do we pray father god all our prayers goes to god okay in acts acts chapter 4 there we clearly say 
when the church was persecuted they all got together and they lifted up their voice to heavenly father and started praying to him so yo so we pray to god now as we pray we through we pray through somebody that is finally when we end we pray all this through jesus christ so we approach the father through jesus christ who enables us to become his child because he sanctifies us now as we pray who prays along with us holy spirit romans chapter 8 verse 27 there we see when we pray when we don't know what words to use he is the one holy spirit is the one who prays along with us giving us the words enabling us to pray in a meaningful way let me give you an example and close <clears throat> once we had a seminar on prayer it took place in breeze hotel here now it's not there i think no it's not there now and a foreigner foreign missionary he came and conducted the seminar <clears throat> he taught us how to pray and in what way you shouldn't pray and all these things then after lunch we got together and then he said okay now i am going to train you with a practical way so i want someone to come forward so that we can all pray for you and initially no one came but at the end one elderly lady came and he put a chair in the middle and asked her to be seated and okay what is the prayer point for what we have to pray and she had a little cut in the little finger and she had a bandage and she showed it to the missionary uh, and to everybody and probably you can pray for this when i was cutting the vegetable it got cut i got cut so please pray for the healing then he asked me asked us who is going to pray as usual as as a typical indians who has the tr- starting trouble <laughs> nobody came forward then as a pastor i said okay i'll pray then he said before you start praying invite the holy spirit to come within you and help you to pray then you continue to pray so i did the same thing i started the prayer praise god invited the holy spirit to come within me and help me to pray then i continued to pray i prayed for a finger then i started praying for a family immediately he stopped the prayer he said pastor just wait and he asked the lady see you wanted him to pray for your finger now he started praying for your family is there does that make sense is there any relationship between what he is praying and what is happening in your family and immediately the lady said yes pastor we have a special child only child now we have become old before i i come to this uh, i came to this seminar myself and my husband were discussing about our daughter he was saying who will take care of her if we die because we have become old she is also grown up but her mental age is very very low who will take care of her will our relatives take care of her so we were wondering about it we were very sad but i came to this seminar yes there is a connection between what the pastor is praying with my family dear brothers and sisters in christ for our salvation 
we need father son and holy spirit father is the creator he created you and me jesus christ is our savior he is our redeemer without him there is no salvation and without the holy spirit our salvation is not complete because we need to be sanctified every day every day we can lead a good christian life only with the power of the holy spirit even though we may not fully understand the doctrine of trinity in our experience in our christian life father son and holy spirit are interacting in our life let's keep a moment of silence Oh father thank you for your presence here oh jesus thank you for your presence here even though we may not see you through our human eyes we know that your presence is here when two or three are gathered in your name you said you will be there in their midst oh jesus kindly stretch forth your loving hands the hands that were crucified for our sake on the cross touch each and every one of us and bless us thank you for giving us your salvation oh holy spirit thank you for sanctifying us thank you for equipping us thank you for encouraging us thank you for enabling us to lead a good christian life oh father son and holy spirit we bow down before you and give all glory to you even though we may not understand this doctrine fully we know through our experience in our christian life for our salvation in our prayer life we experience you as father son and holy spirit help us to remain in this relationship relating to you always oh lord acknowledging father son and holy spirit is always with us continue to be with us and lead us in jesus name we pray amen finally let me share with you one thing <clears throat> i found as i said i told you all the examples are not perfect none of them and finally one bible scholar came up with one figure and said this is perfect it has one and three now what is that anyway this is the biblical position the figure or the symbol for understanding father son and holy spirit is here in our church i found it only in the morning when i conducted the tamil service i looked at the view i mean the, the front uh, stand do you see the figure here i don't know you would have seen it uh, when you come for the holy communion here as well as in the in front of the uh, choir we have the three circle like thing and one hole you see that okay there is only one hole that is the perfect symbol for the trinity i found it only in this morning after being here for one year i really thank god for that let's hold on to the father son and holy spirit and receive all his blessing god bless you